Hey guys, you will soon be working on your final assignment. So um, what I wanted to give you is a little framework that may help you to reflect on the year that you've had as a Queen Young Leader um, through some different lenses of time and space. They might help you to organise some thoughts in your mind. They might trigger some new thoughts or some new insights or perhaps uh, just shine a spotlight on on perhaps some areas that you've missed. So I hope what it's going to do is going to give you some help and support as you put together your thinking for your final assignment, during which time you'll be reflecting on your year as a Queen Young's Leader, the stuff that's gone really well from you, the stuff that you found challenging, and you'll also then begin to move on to thinking about kind of your, your goals and targets and visions for 2017 and 2020. So I hope this is going to be helpful. My name's Todd, and uh, this framework I'm going to talk you through is actually developed by my, two of my business partners, two really wonderful, lovely people called Nigel and Jefferson, and it's called The Three Dimensions of Leadership. You have it in your workbook for Module 7. It's here on page 7, and so it's useful if you have this with you as I talk through things. The structure of this, what, five minutes or so conversation, I should say conversation, a five minute video, I'll introduce the axes of the framework, talk through really briefly the different modes of leadership, there's nine different modes of leadership, and then just give you a little question to think about. So you're turning kind of theoretical model into your experiences. And then I'll just give you a little brief about what happened at the Facebook Live sessions on the 17th of May. So let's first of all then take a look at this model and take a look at the two axes. So if you're going to lead a group of people anywhere, what's the first thing you need to know? That's right. We need to know the destination. We need to know where we're heading. And business speak, that's the vision. So that's the stuff that you'll be working through when you're thinking about 2017 and 2020. So we can put on something in the on the time axis, which is an idea of the future. What's the next thing you need to know? Now at this point most people sit, say oh, they need to know the strategy or how to get there, but actually what we're missing then is precisely where we're starting from. So we need to know the now, how things are, um, get grounded with reality. Clearly when you've got those two you have a destination and you know exactly where you are now, then you can work on the strategy, and we would call that the path. So on the axis now, we've got um, three spaces on the time dimension. Um, now, the path, and the future. Straightforward, huh? If you're going to lead anybody anywhere, who's the first person that you need to lead? Self. So in the space axis, the first dimension we've got on the space axis is self self-leadership. Then we clearly we have to lead the people close to us and our teams and then the world. Now you might be thinking my goodness Todd how am I going to lead the world? What we mean here is the world that you affect. So you will draw the circle of your world right for you and your circle if you are a large multinational organization like Coca-Cola you might think well actually we do have an impact on the world. Um, your, ambition, your ambitions may be slightly smaller you might be thinking of a nation or a community or a specific group of individuals, maybe a family set. So you draw your circle as large as feels right for you. So there we have some dimensions. And you can see on the chart now that gives us a three by three grid, which gives us nine modes of leadership. The third dimension, which I'll touch on really briefly here, um, this is the dimension of being. So in each one of those nine spaces, a leader brings their presence to the, each of those spaces. And when we talk about being, we're talking about the act of leadership. And so in essence, it's about um, the depth of your awareness in each of these positions. Um, the depth of which you connect with those feelings and with those emotions and with that awareness. And then the transformation is doing stuff within this mode of leadership. 
So you can think about how effective you are being in each of the nine different sections. So let me now just briefly talk through each of those diff nine different modes of leadership, uh, just so you can get some kind of sense or, or grasp about what they are. I'm going to start looking down the, the vertical axis, which is the now. Um, so at the bottom there, you've got the self in the now. People who bring themselves to this moment, being genuine and real, and here we would call authentic leaders. Those leaders who foster kind of a non-hierarchical sense, uh, an empowering attitude towards others, those that foster well adult to adult relationships, we we'll call those adult leaders. And then shifting up, so top on that column, now in the world, these are grounded leaders. The grounded leader leaders. These are leaders who have got a real great sense of reality. So what's happening right now in my community? So these people have got they're reality testers. They're called grounded leaders. So now we shift all the way across now to the right hand side of the grid and into the future. So those individuals that get a sense that they can be more than they are today, that have a sense of their own unrealized and untapped potential. So some sense that there is a ver version of themselves which is better than the version of themselves today. We call those inspired leaders. Those individuals that can do the same thing for the team around them, help them to get a sense of their potential, then they are inspiring leaders. And then those leaders that uh, have a sense of the possibilities for the world that they affect, so bring it to life, see something that doesn't yet exist. Well, these are visioning leaders. And just a point on this, the slight difference between a visionary and a visionary leader is the visionary leader is able to communicate that vision so that their listeners can hear and understand it. So that's all about the future. And clearly then, joining the two things up is the path or the way. So um, journeying leaders are those that are taking action on their own self-development. They are self-actualizing in real time, working on themselves to become this better version of themselves. In the middle section now you've got helping and supporting your team through their own challenges as they go on their own journey. So these are coaching leaders. And finally, when you're trying to affect your vision in the world, there will inevitably be challenges and hurdles that need overcoming. So the challenging leaders are those that notice the hurdles and persevere and push on through them. So we've termed those the challenging leaders. So just in five minutes, we've just taken a look at nine different modes of leadership and set them in a framework of space and time. So now I'd like to take this from being a theoretical model on a piece of paper and into something that's real for you. So without giving this too much thought, just take a pen, take your grid and place a tick next to the three modes of leadership that you feel most comfortable with. When you've done that, place an X next to those three leadership styles that you feel least comfortable with. And perhaps those are the ones you'd like to place more emphasis on developing. Because leaders don't just work in one of these styles and become an awesome visionary leader. A three-dimensional leader works across this grid and has got an ability to use each of these styles at the right moment. So you've now reflected, or in a moment you'll be reflecting on your relative strengths and weaknesses within that grid. And on the um, Facebook Live um, call, I think it's called, on the Facebook Live session, on the 17th of November, we'll dig into your questions or your thoughts or your observations uh, about that. And please, if you can't make that session, then make sure that Francis gets your questions in advance and I'll be addressing those on the Facebook Live call themselves. So I hope that has all been really useful to you. I hope it's been interesting. And I look forward to, um, I guess, being with some of you on the 17th. Thank you.